What kind of urban challenges may the future bring? How can we prepare for future urban problems without even knowing how they will look like? What does it mean to plan for resilience in the Global South? Hello, my name is Igor Pessoa and I'm a PhD candidate in the Faculty of Architecture and the Built Environment at TU Delft. With the support of the CAPS Foundation, I'm working on a research project that tries to identify applicable mechanisms to increase resilience in Brazilian metropolises. In the previous lecture, we discussed where the concept of resilience originated from and how it can be applied to urban planning. With that in mind, I would like to discuss some of the challenges, questions and possible solutions related to resilience in the Global South that I have encountered during my research. To have a deeper understanding of the topic, you can find in the reference section some articles about how resilience is seen in different ways in different places. To think about resilience in Chicago, Lisbon, or Amsterdam is definitely different from the resilience thinking in urban planning for Beijing, Delhi, or Rio de Janeiro. In this lecture, the Global South is used as a term to refer to what some researchers call emerging economies countries. I prefer to use the term Global South to avoid the strict economic connotation that the term emerging economies has. The challenges and resources of the Global North are very different from the South. Of course, there are also differences between cases in the Global South. However, we can highlight some relatively common challenges and lessons. Even though the majority of academic attention to resilience tends to focus on environmental aspects and shocks, resilience in the Global South has also other dimensions and challenges. Resilience in Southern contexts can be influenced, for example, by aspects like weak the weakness of formal institutions. This video shows Porto Prince, the capital of IT. You can notice here that the urban environment has a high level of informality. The main urban activities like housing, transport or commerce are organized in an informal way by the population. So how can urban planning increase resilience in areas that are so informal? How is it possible to create a resilience strategy in an informal urban settlement? Some researchers mentioned that one way out of this puzzle is to transform vulnerabilities into opportunities. For example, it would be possible to use the strong social connections already present in an informal urban context to create a self-organized network to respond to future unknown shocks. Other researchers say that the creation of institutions can improve communication and consequently promote a quicker response to a shock. So resilience is also about building social connections. Nevertheless, maybe nowadays, the use of online social networks, for example, could be a more efficient tool to promote resilience than the creation of formal institutions. And what about the other way around? What about cities where the government is extremely strong and controls every urban activity, like massive housing provision, for example? Is it possible to be resilient depending only on the centralized public entity? How is it possible to produce urban environments that empower the local population so they can better react to any kind of shock that the future may bring? It is important to remember that the resilience, a resilient system needs to work on the government level, but it has to work even when the government fails to. For urban environments where the system mainly depends on the government, bottom-up and self-organizing initiatives could be an interesting solution to make urban systems more resilient. Another issue that is relevant to many cities in the emerging world is related to financial constraints. How is it possible to apply the resilience thinking in urban planning when working in places with scarce financial resources? To promote resilience in cities where the public and the private sectors have limited financial resources is more complex. Initiatives need to be more creative and use the available resources in a more strategic way. Resilience in the South also means creativity and strategic economic planning. To be able to talk about resilience in the South, it is important to have a comprehensive lens and understand it as a framework that entails environmental, social, and economic dimensions. As well captured by Aida Eraidin, quote, planning for resilience can find a home in planning theory as an analysis of the external dynamics that accelerate urban economic, social, and spatial vulnerability 
and as an approach that helps to link social and economic process with ecological process, calling for a reconsideration of the substance of planning so as to enhance capacity to deal with slow and sudden changes of different forms." Unquote. Especially in less developed countries, being resilient needs to go beyond the simple understanding of the survival of this urban system. Cities in very precarious conditions, without garbage collection, without sanitation, without efficient public transport solutions, for example, can adapt and continue to function, but that does not necessarily mean that they are resilient. The survival of the urban system, especially in a precarious condition, can even be a trap to perpetuate one disadvantageous context. Resilience entails more than adaptation, but also self-organization and transformability. Resilience being understood as a combination of adaptive capacity, self-organization and transformability in social, economic and environmental dimensions can provide the aptitude to an urban system to evolve and go beyond the simple perpetuation of a precarious condition. A comprehensive understanding of resilience can be the key for a better urban development in the South. Maybe you could already observe what are the main challenges that your city faces related to resilience. Is it about flood resilience? Is it about earthquake resilience? Or maybe it is not related to any kind of environmental shock. Some policy documents also mention social and economic resilience, which can be important to some southern context. Can you also think about social and economic challenges of your local context? Can you think about how urban policies could contribute to improve the resilience capacity of your city against these challenges? Since resilience is a broad concept, it is important to think about methods on how to address it. In the next lecture, we will have a look at an example of how resilience can be mapped and visualized.